Hi, everyone, and welcome to Just Start with Jane. Um, this is a place where every other week, Sue and I are going to host a live event with guests from around the country. And we know these people to just start. These are people who took our solutions and really were early adopters and took them to new heights, either for their own personal leadership, for their department, or in the case of my guest today, her entire organization. So please help me welcome Heather Schrag. Heather uh, is the Quality and Risk Management Director at a five-star organization in Eaton Rapids, Michigan, Eaton Rapids Medical Center. And Heather, thank you so much. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> um, I wanna let you know that we are particularly uh, interested in the subject this month of alignment. And when you think about alignment, you know, think about, okay, everybody's on the bus. We got everybody on the bus. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all sitting in the seat that they were meant to sit in, doing job that, jobs that give them great purpose and intent and, and the mission. And the bus is the mission, vision, values, strategy, going down the bus or going mm -hmm. down the road all at the same time without anybody pounding on the back door, trying to get open the fire extinguisher and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, your organization, wow, talk about amazing over the top success. And at the time you were brand new to the organization and they were brand new to a journey. In fact, you were hired at, at the beginning before you got three or four hats to, to lead the journey, uh, which is named uh, 212. And so, you know, I really see you as a leader who took this, this, this idea or the solution, uh, especially when it comes to strategy and goals and alignment and, and really coached others. So you're not a senior leader. Nope. You, you were the initiative champion, but still you were a leader of leaders. I truly, truly believe that uh, about you. So describe for me how you coached peer leaders to be in alignment with 212, how you helped people see, this is the direction we have to go in. This is really the right place. Tell me how you did that. Well, thank you, Jane, so much. So when I first started, it was literally day one. Uh, so I report to the president and CEO, Tim, mm -hmm. and day one, he said, Heather, this is going to be part of your role. And he believed in me. He gave me that confidence right from day one. Mm -hmm. And that was so important. So first of all, him believing in me and supporting me was huge. And really from, from that moment, um, I got uh, your information. I, I was put into touch with uh, and connected with you and Sue. And really from there, the ball started rolling. So we implemented the strategies that uh, we have learned and, um, and taken from you and really made our own. So you know, Capstone has really been this integral part of our journey all along. And what I really loved from the tools that you've given us is that it's not just a cookie cutter that, you know, here you go, put it into place. You really encourage us to make it our own. And that's what we did. So with the 212 degree journey, um, you know, yes, we were given the, the mold of, um, you know, the steering team and the, the journey teams, but we made it our own and let it fit our journey. So that was really amazing. And getting um, to lead that journey has um, really been a, a sheer honor. And so once we, we developed, you know, what is this gonna look like? We took the concepts that we learned from, from both you and Sue and really just ran with it. And, you know, one thing we knew was that we needed to get something that was going to have some staying power. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people weren't gonna gonna buy into something if they knew it was gonna be the flavor of the week or the flavor of the month, and yeah. that was gonna change. Um, so we knew that whatever we um, developed and adopted, it needed to stay. It needed to stick. It needed to be important, and we needed to have buy-in. So being the initiative champion, gosh, almost nine years ago, mm -hmm. it needed to be something that that I believed in, that our steering team believed in, so that when we started building our journey teams, mm -hmm. that that everyone, the leaders, and then of course the employees, because 
they're employee populated, employee driven, that they believed in so that they could take these initiatives back to their peers and that they were the boots on the ground and that they believed in it so that they could push these initiatives forward. So one of the first things we, we knew we needed to, to start with was our HCAP scores. Mm-hmm. We knew it. We knew it. This was an area that we struggled with and both our internal and external customer service um, relationships. So it, we knew that if we didn't have happy employees, we certainly wouldn't have happy patients and happy customers. So those were two of the biggest areas that we um, that we decided to dig in with. And 212 degrees really started it all. And it was a concept that we could get behind. And at first people thought, what on earth is that? But just really quickly, it's 211 degrees, water's hot. At 212 degrees, water boils. It creates steam to move a locomotive. It's all about that extra degree of energy. And how could we apply that extra degree of energy in healthcare? Um, And it can be applied anywhere. So, you know, from my role to a clinical role anywhere, and we really took that and embraced it and led by example. So it's really important from my role as the initiative champion at the time down to, you know, every single employee. And you have to lead by example, walk the walk, talk the talk. You know, it's not just something that's going to get shelved that looks really good on paper and get shelved. We're nine years into our journey. And um, of course, we've had ebbs and flows and we've had to kind of PDSA it along the way. But um, I think that was the biggest piece is finding something that we could make our own, get behind and lead by example. Oh, that's fabulous. You know, so Sue and I call it the 5K rule. Every once in a while, an employee driven team will get a wild hair and just decide that they're what they set out to do, the original action plan or the original org goal that they were striving to to assist with, you know, in alignment with strategy or goals. And then these teams that you assign your your org goals to or a department head just gets this wild hair and uh, says, you know, I'm going to raise money for a 5K because that's fun. I want to do something fun. You know, this, this word, how do you, how do you coach that? Like, I never saw that with your leaders or your teams. How do you get people to really keep their focus? This is the prize. And, you know, before we started and I'll tell this story and, you know, um, your senior leaders might not be too happy about it, but this summer when I was there working with you guys and we were setting goals, it had been decided that the org goals were going to be you know, finance and, you know, a people pillar. Mm -hmm. And you were, you were working towards guys, we can't take our eye off the ball that when we strive for five-star recognition, that gets us so much. The ripple effect of trying to attain that will get us financial success, will get us employee engagement success. It's something people can get behind. Uh, And you didn't win that argument, sister. No, no, (laughs) no. But I love how you made it. Mm -hmm. I love that. So if you could for me, always when I see you, Heather, and Sue totally agrees with me, you know, you are our, our number four change challenge is how do you get people to be early adopters and to follow where you lead? And the second thing is, how do you diffuse? How do you diffuse a message? How do you get it? And I call it positive perseverance when I think about you. So, you know, how did you role model that and speak the language every day? Well, so again, I think it goes back to believing it. Yeah. So if you believe it and you feel it inside of you, it's going to come out of you. Right. Um, so I think that, you know, of course, walking the walk, talking the talk, leading by example. And when people come to you to talk about it and they have questions or concerns, of course, you want to listen to them. You want to hear them out. You want to validate them. Mm-hmm. It's not easy. Everybody doesn't doesn't absorb it or get it um, at the same level or the same, same time. Um, the t- same time, but mm-hmm. meeting them where they're at, giving, giving them, you know, suggestions and helping them along the way, you know, not everybody's as great at technology and filling out the forms, um, you know, so I really try to assist them when, where I can, um, being over quality, goal setting is what I do. Mm-hmm. So goal setting, you know, when we strategically plan, we include our leaders in um, strategic planning. It's not just the executive team that's setting the goals for the organization. We include our leadership team because if we include our leadership team, 
they're going to be more willing to buy into it. You yeah. know, we goal set for the departments. We include our employees in that goal setting because mm -hmm. if we include our employees, they're going to be more apt to help work towards meeting those goals. It's all that cascading effect. And in the past, we had five pillars for our hospital goals. Unfortunately, because of COVID, I hate the word COVID now. I try not to use it as a crutch. And you're kind of part of that <laughs> that, that um, helped me with that. But yeah. we went from five hospital goals to two. That was really hard for me mm -hmm. um, because to me, I don't want to use COVID as a crutch. Why right. can't we have five hospital goals? But that yeah. was a decision that was made and quality wasn't one of them. Yeah. It's the first time in nine years we've not had a quality goal. But for me as a leader, I kept a piece of the star rating um, readmissions as part of my goal. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it still is important to so many areas. We can't take our eye off that focus. Yeah. Um, so many areas we still live and breathe quality every single day. We're a hospital yeah, for people. We can't take our eye off that ball. Yeah. Um, but letting people know, being transparent, being open, um, keeping that communication flowing, letting people know that you're here to help them. This yeah. isn't another thing to do in the day. This is a compliment to their day. This is to help make it easier, help organize them, get them out of the whirlwind. I'm not going to say that I'm perfect by any means. I get sucked in just like everyone else. Yeah. But we're here as a team. And if I can help with that, please lean on me. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think, again, goal setting, cascading down, involving everybody so they know they're part of the solution. Mm -hmm. uh, living it, breathing it is huge. And uh, maintaining that positive attitude. Of course, we all have our down days, we get frustrated. Right. right. But, but living it and breathing it. I mean, I got the I got the um, the license plate for it, you know, the 212 <laughs> license plate. Uh, it's important. It's important. Yeah. yeah. And it's not going away. Right. It's important. Well, and I think, you know, it crosses over into your personal life too. Absolutely. We all give extra effort in our relationships at, at home as well. Of you know, course. I got to tell the story when you said, you know, goals are me, I am goals. And uh, I'll never forget the day. It's a June beautiful day. Your fiscal and goal year is July 1. And you, my phone rang and it said Eaton Rapids Medical Center. And I thought, well, that's weird. I'm like, hello. And it's Heather. And she says, Jay. I just helped 17 leaders set their goals in alignment with our organization's strategy and org goals. And I can't think of a dang goal for my department. Help me. So oh yeah, I remember it. I remember. Yes. I still tell that story everywhere. Yes. yes. Hospital, number one in the state of Michigan. Yes. And the primary goal chick is calling me on the phone. Yes. Help yes. Me. <laughs> it's, well, it's easy to help other people. You can look at yeah. them and say, okay, you've got this HCAP score. You've got this HCAP score. You've got this patient volume or this financial volume. Yeah. And here I am in quality and risk. And I've got all these balls helping other people. And then I look at myself and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jay. <laughs> It was hilarious. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Heather. Thank Our call to action you. for everybody out there. If you are struggling to get everybody on the bus, Right. If you are strong, if you've got five year olds on your bus all in the wrong seat and nobody's aligned with you and your message and and your strategy, book a call. Our website, www.capstoneleadership.net. And uh, we'd be glad to talk you through it. Thanks. The best call you'll ever make. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.